What's up, everybody? Um, I think some of you may not know this about me, but I actually teach ACT slash SAT classes on the side to try and potentially make a living as I'm going into the field of medicine. Um, but I get this question a lot. How important is the SAT slash ACT? And um, it's a very misrepresented question because a lot of students think that the test represents something that it actually doesn't. So I'm going to spend this time telling you what these tests are actually not and then tell you why they actually matter for college. So I'll tell you first what these tests are not. These tests are not a measure of intelligence. If you're using them to, you know, say, oh, I scored lower than someone else and therefore I am not as good as this other person, don't do that. Okay, that's not true at all. All right, these tests have no bearing on how smart you are. They're just random tests. All right. Um, similarly, they're also not a career career defining test. I remember when I was taking the SAT slash ACT back when I was young. <laughs> uh, I was like, I need to do really well, and everyone's parents were like, Okay, this is the biggest test of your life. You should do really well, or you know, colleges will hate you, and you will be failure in life, and all that jazz. Trust me, that's not true. It's not a career defining test. It's an important test, don't get me wrong, but it's not something that defines your career. It's not like for me, in my case, I used to think that if I failed, I wouldn't be able to be a doctor, which clearly was not the case and is not the case, okay? Similarly, the SAT and ACT is also not something that is 100% a measure of your readiness for college. A lot of students, again, view it as a Hail Mary, like this test is gonna determine if I get into college. It's a component of the college op process, but trust me, it's not everything, all right? There's a ton of students with low scores that get into amazing places and a ton of people with high scores that don't get into amazing places because they um, colleges care that you're more than just a simple test, all right? So don't think that a bad SAT or ACT score is going to completely screw your chances of college. Similarly, the SAT slash ACT is not something that people in college care about. What I mean by that is a lot of students initially going into college think that their SAT slash ACT score is like a label on their head when they go in. It's exactly the opposite. No one cares about your score the moment you get into college, okay? Uh, back at Berkeley where where um, a lot of there are a lot of students, you know, there are people who get low scores on the SAT and ACT that do really well and people who get high scores that do not as well, all right? The score of your SAT and ACT is something that you just need to apply to college, but the moment you get in, no one cares about it. All right, please don't, please like get that in your head. If that's one thing you take away from this, because I think a lot of students think that their score sticks with them for their whole life. And it really doesn't. It's something that you'll do and you'll use it to get into college and then that's it. Don't put that much weight on it, okay? And that goes into my next point, which is the ACT and SAT. This is not the biggest test of your life, okay? I think a lot of students, again, think that it is because there's so much weight placed on it by society. <laughs> um, but again, don't think that just because you'll get a perfect score, you'll go to a perfect school. And just because you'll get a bad score, you'll go to a bad school. There's no score in this life that ever really defines you. And again, the, the, more you get out of it, the more you get out of that mindset, the more it'll help you. Because when I was in uh, high school, I think one of the reasons I didn't do so hot on my SAT slash ACT was because I put all this weight on it. So when I walked in, I was just so scared. And that kind of inhibited me from working. So it's important that you realize that this test is not everything. And um, there's a lot more to you than just this number. I want to make sure you understand that I'm not trying to create this video to bash on the test because I do want you to see that there was a reason why colleges care about it. You know, I just kind of bashed on it for a good, uh, a whole slide was just bashing on the SAT and ACT and why I don't think students should put as much weight on it. But I do want you to know you should care, okay? You need to take this to get into college. So that's the number one thing. You need to take this test because it shows colleges you actually want to go to college. And going to college is huge in this generation. You know, back in the day where people could graduate with a high school degree, I think now because society and everything is advancing so quickly, a college degree is more important than ever. And to even get to college, trust me, a high school diploma doesn't cut it anymore. I mean, trust me when I say a college degree, I've learned so much in college that I probably would not have learned in high school. And that's why it's so important. And to even get into college or to even apply for college, you need to have these scores. Yes, there are some colleges that don't require them, but the majority of colleges do. And that's why colleges care about it. Because when you take this test, you show an initial uh, desire to go into college. Okay. Similarly, when colleges see you took the SAT or ACT, it shows them that you know how to plan. All right. In high school, trust me when I say there's nothing that really gauges 
how well you plan. You know, there might be big group projects or big deadlines, but the SAT and ACT are designed such that you have to plan for them over like a couple months. All right, so when you take these tests, you, they're not only measuring how well you studied for them. They're measuring, did you plan for it? Did you plan to take a test that was outside of the normal school curriculum? And did you plan to do well on it? All right, you can't just take the test and like get a, a, a half half score and like be okay with it. You have to plan for it. And, and this is an indirect measure of that. People who plan over three months and really plan their studying do better and colleges can see that. And they see, okay, at least this person knows how to commit to something and stick through it because that's college, all right? In college, you, you start the material and you don't really get any homework. You have to commit to the material and you have to study for it and you have to take a final exam on the entire semester's worth of material, all right? It's very emblematic of how you should study for the SAT or ACT. And I think that's one of the things that's gauged in this test. And again, it shows that you can commit. In high school, probably the longest test you take is probably an hour, hour and a half. In college, the longest test you can take is about three hours. My final exams were all three hours. All right. So when you take the SAT and ACT, it shows you can sit down and commit to learning for three plus hours, which is what you're going to have to do in college. So big, big deal here. All right. Um, and similarly, some of you may already know this, but High school is great differently. My high school may have given out way more A's than another high school in my district, and actually it probably did, right? Um, but the way school is standardized for that is by making you take the ACT or SAT because that's the same across the nation, all right? The median SAT score and ACT score are always the same. So that way, even though if it might be easier to get a four-pointer in my school, uh, I'll, I'll compensate for that by getting a lower score on a standardized test than someone else. And so, so basically the point is, um, amongst all these schools that have different grading systems, there's standardization, and that's why they all colleges want to see this because they kind of want to see how people fare with respect to each other. All right, so it is important. And last but not least, it's a holistic overview of general knowledge. All right, it shows that you can read, write, and do math, which are the three most important basic things for a college. I mean, you can argue that there could be a fourth, but these are the three fundamentals, and that's why. Um, they're on the SAT and ACT. ACT has science, which you may add on as a virtue, but I'd argue that if you can read and do math, you can do science because that's the intersection of the two. All right. Um, so that's why colleges care about it. So I want to make it very clear that I'm not bashing on the ACT, but I am trying to say it's not the biggest thing in your life, but if you take it, which you should, all right, you should take it. Uh, you should try to do well on it. Let me just give this brief conclusion. Take the SAT and ACT and try your best. They are major stepping stones for college, and by not taking them or not trying your best, you're doing yourself a disservice because what's going to happen is you won't end up in college, and trust me when I say a college degree for the next 20, 30 years is going to be imperative. I mean, this is me trying to say like I know, but I think I've talked to a lot of adults and mentors that have told me it will be, um, and so it's not me talking. I'm kind of leading off the words and advice I got from my mentors. Um, similarly, oh God, I don't want to mess that up. Let me control D. But anyway, it's still imperative to do well to get into the college of your choice. So, you know, different colleges have different SAT, ACT scores. So look up the SAT, ACT score that's ideal for your college and aim for that. All right. And I will make sure I stress this. A good score is necessary, but not sufficient for college. That's me throwing in my little science jargon. Necessary means a score, good score is needed. If you want to get into college, you need a good score. But just because you have a good score, it's not enough to be the only thing that gets you into college. That's what sufficient means. So it's saying like, oh, let's say you have a really good score, but you didn't do anything else in your life. You probably might not get into college. But let's say you have a mediocre score, but you let's say you really have a passion for science and you really love learning and you really you know volunteered at a hospital and you really got to go outside of your comfort zone. And you did all these different things. Colleges love seeing that, you know, and that's the biggest thing. Um, so a good score is necessary, but not sufficient. Don't put this test on a pedestal, pedestal, all right? It's really not that big of a deal. It is just another test, but do take it seriously and don't put your life and death on it. Like, don't think that it's the difference between life and death because it's not. And I will say last but not least, these last two big things, a genuine desire to learn is so much more important than a perfect score. Uh, if I was an admissions officer, which I'm not, uh, but I'm sure I would much rather see that uh, if a person is really passionate about math, let's say, but they didn't do too well on the math SAT, but they really, really enjoy the subject and they say, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really pursue it in college, I would value that much more than a perfect score in an SAT or ACT because, because of this last point. You are more than a number. 
And the people that do the best in college are the ones that want to be there. And um, even if they didn't do too well, if you can show that passion through other things, such as, you know, clubs, activities, leadership positions, that's all the more important. All right. So I hope this made more sense. And I really, really hope you guys got something out of it. And um, yeah, if you liked, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. You want to check out any of my other videos, there's going to be one right here. Another link to one of my videos right here. And another video right here. Why not? I'll put one video right over here. And last but not least, if you want to subscribe to this channel, really appreciate it because I'm still an early YouTuber trying to get it down. But a subscription button should be right over here. So please subscribe. Cool. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. Hope you find these videos helpful.